was a particular period of my life. I was facing economic problems and trying in every way to increase my income to deal more serenely with daily expenses. At that time, I was working in a clothing store. So, I decided to turn to a longtime friend, hoping she could help me find a second job. I explained my situation to her, emphasizing the urgency. I asked if she knew anyone who needed assistance, perhaps as an assistant or in another role, mentioning my willingness to work even at night if necessary. My friend started asking around among people she knew, and after about two days, she called me with an interesting proposal. She told me about a man named James, a 44-year-old musician who needed assistance for his elderly mother. The woman, Margaret, was 72 years old and had been diagnosed with dementia. Given my situation, I accepted the invitation without hesitation, recognizing that this opportunity could be a solution to my financial difficulties. I asked for James's phone number to contact him and arrange a meeting. We spoke on the phone and scheduled a meeting for the next day at 4 Komalzalner p.m. On that day, I went to James and his mother's house to discuss the details of the job. Upon arrival, I was warmly welcomed, and I had a good impression. After some small talk, we started discussing the practical aspects of the job. We agreed that my monthly pay would be $1,300, and the job required my presence five days a week, including nights, to ensure continuous coverage and constant support for his mother, Margaret. Unfortunately, that day, I didn't have the opportunity to meet her, as she was upstairs resting. The next day around 7 p.m. I went for my first day of work. On that occasion, I finally had the opportunity to meet Margaret, who, unfortunately, turned out to be not particularly friendly. Despite my desire to establish a friendly relationship and make her feel comfortable, she continued to show some resistance. Communication with her was difficult, and she maintained a distant attitude. That evening, James had a performance at a venue about an hour's drive away, so he left shortly after. After a few minutes, I called Margaret, telling her that dinner was ready. She came downstairs, and we started dinner while watching TV. She didn't say a word during the meal, and it was awkward. It was already 10 more p.m., and Margaret usually went to bed around that time. So I escorted her to bed, and shortly after, she peacefully fell asleep. Initially, I thought the evening would be calm since Margaret was resting peacefully, but I had no idea what the night had in store for me. After making sure she was sleeping peacefully, I decided to take a few minutes to relax. I sat in a chair, watching TV, and snacking on some chocolate biscuits. Suddenly, after about half an hour, I heard noises coming from the wooden floor upstairs where Margaret's room was located. Concerned, I called Margaret twice, trying to make sure everything was okay but received no response. At that point, I became agitated and decided to go upstairs to check what was happening. Upon entering her room, I found her facing the window, hitting the wall with her right fist. Margaret, are you okay? I asked, expressing my concern. She turned towards me abruptly and said firmly, Why are you here? This is my home. You have to leave. She seemed confused, and I couldn't understand. I realized she was going through a difficult time, likely due to her condition. With patience, I tried to calm her and make her understand that I was there to help. I told her that my presence was meant to ensure her well-being and that I was there to support her. Fortunately, after a few minutes, she calmed down and went back to bed. At that point, after assuring her that she could call me for anything at any time, I went back downstairs. I sat in the chair again, hoping Margaret could rest peacefully for the rest of the night and that the situation wouldn't repeat itself. The tranquility didn't last long, very little. After a few minutes, I heard the noises coming from her room again. I decided to try calling her, hoping for a response, but it didn't happen. Hastily, I went upstairs towards her room. As soon as I crossed the threshold, I saw her sitting in the middle of the bed, hands covering her face. Margaret, what's wrong? Are you feeling unwell? I asked, concerned. In the darkness, I couldn't make out where her eyes were focused, but her response was the same as before. Why are you here? This is my house. You have to leave. I approached slowly, trying to calm her. 
It was evident that something deeply disturbed her, but I couldn't understand the cause of her agitation. With great calmness, I reassured her, saying, I'm here to take care of you, Margaret. Everything is okay, don't worry. However, she continued to reject me, telling me to leave. Fortunately, she fell asleep shortly after. I was becoming exhausted, bone tired, and felt the weight of that night. I desperately needed some sleep. I returned to the armchair, trying hard to resist sleep, but soon fatigue overcame me. I fell asleep without realizing it. Shortly after, I was awakened again by the same noises. This time, I didn't even try to call her name and headed back upstairs. As soon as I entered her room, the scene before my eyes was disturbing. She was on her bed, in the midst of a crisis, pulling her hair and biting the mattress. She was desperate. I approached, trying to figure out how I could help. Margaret, I'm here. Calm down. Please stop. Everything is fine, I said reassuringly. It was all in vain. And suddenly, Margaret, in the midst of her agitation, tried to attack me by putting her hands around my neck. Fortunately, I managed to dodge it. Ma'am, I'm here to help, I said firmly, raising my voice. Suddenly, she calmed down. I breathed a sigh of relief. That night had turned into a nightmare. Fortunately, with the arrival of Down, Jamie's came home. From my expression, he immediately understood that the night had not been peaceful. I explained what had happened need, apologizing and expressing that I couldn't handle such a complex situation. I explained that, in that context, it would be necessary to involve more people to address the challenges Margaret's situation presented. James understood my words and suggested bringing in two more people to handle his mother's complex situation. I declined, explaining that despite my years of experience with various types of patients, this was too demanding a situation for me to handle. Regretfully, I shook his hand and left. I will never forget that night. I sincerely hope I never experience such a situation again. In 2020, I started working for a small pizzeria near my home, famous for its gourmet pizzas. Customers were often very demanding, and for me, it was a completely different experience from my previous job. It was my first evening at work, and everything was going perfectly. The main reason I had taken that job was the need to earn extra money. I had promised my girlfriend that for our anniversary, I would take her to Paris for a week. That evening, I was paired with Robert, a guy who had been working there for three years. He was a quiet type, very helpful in assisting me. Around 9 p.m., the first home delivery request came in. The order included three pizzas and a drink. Since it was my first delivery, Robert decided to accompany me. I remember leaving the establishment with the three hot pizzas in the thermal bag, the drink in a bag, and the customer's order receipt in my left hand. I was excited. It was my first delivery. We got into the car and started heading to the delivery address. After about 15 minutes, we arrived at the destination. The specified address was in an isolated area, surrounded by tall trees and lacking in illumination. Upon arriving at the house, I immediately noticed something unusual. All the lights inside the house were off. It seemed like there was no one inside the residence. Once we reached the door, we knocked. Shortly after, the door opened slowly and behind it appeared a man with an eccentric appearance. He had disheveled hair, wore a colorful robe, and held a lantern. He explained that he had electrical problems that evening and had been without power for about three hours. He asked for the total amount of the delivery and told us to wait there while he went to get the money to pay. While the man was away, he left the front door partially open. From the outside, we could see strange paintings on the walls and the floor was covered with strange red stains. The situation made us anxious, and we couldn't wait to leave. After a few minutes, the man didn't return. Hoping he could hear us, I shouted, Hey, is everything okay? Do you need help? But no one responded. Unable to wait any longer due to other deliveries scheduled that evening, we decided to gather courage and enter. We turned on the flashlights on our phones and once inside, nervously crossed the living room. After a few steps, we noticed a door leading to the back. We decided to open it to see where it led, hoping to find that man. 
we found ourselves in a dark courtyard. In the distance, we noticed two individuals who, as soon as they saw us, ran away. We began to walk and shortly after, we saw a dog eating the pizzas we had delivered earlier to that man. We were speechless. Neither I nor Robert had ever experienced anything like it. We couldn't explain what was happening. We searched for a few minutes, but there was no trace of that man. Suddenly, we began to hear strange noises. Without a second thought, we decided to turn back and head toward the car. Our hearts were racing. We got into the car, closed the doors, and quickly drove away from that house. Once back at the pizzeria, we told the owner everything, explaining the strange situation we had encountered. He told us not to worry and that we had done well to leave without hesitation. After about half an hour, the pizzeria's phone rang. It was that man explaining that he had just returned home and had called because his pizza delivery was late. The owner recounted what had happened and the man on the phone began to get angry, denying everything and hanging up. It was evident that something strange was going on in that house and we had narrowly avoided getting involved in something dangerous. Even today, we haven't been able to give a logical explanation for what happened that evening. In the end, I decided to stay and work at that place. The environment is good, and the colleagues are wonderful. Fortunately, a situation like the one I experienced on my first delivery has never happened again. It was the summer of 2022. I had just turned 20, and to support my university studies and indulge in some desires, I decided to find a job. Fortunately, after only two weeks, I found one. It involved folding clothes and organizing merchandise in a fairly large clothing store. I remember that my first day of work, everything seemed to be going well except for my colleagues who didn't seem very sociable. If only that had been the only issue, I had no idea what would happen shortly after. In the afternoon, around 3 p.m., a man in his 50s entered the store, a rather strange character. After a few minutes of him being there, I noticed that he started to follow me as I carried out my tasks. Initially, I thought I was just being paranoid, but unfortunately, after a while, I realized it wasn't the case. After about 10 minutes, I couldn't shake off that man he was everywhere, making me uncomfortable. I started to get anxious, and to avoid thinking about it, I decided to focus on my work. After about an hour, the man was still inside the store and hadn't bought anything. This was evidence that he was there for purposes other than making a purchase. I mentioned it to some of my colleagues, but they dismissed it, saying I was overreacting and that the man was there for his own reasons, not having received the support I was looking for and needed. I decided to message my boyfriend, telling him what happened and asking if he could come to the store as soon as possible. Fortunately, he responded immediately, saying he would arrive in about 15 minutes and would also alert the police. Shortly after, that man began to bother one of my colleagues, who immediately ran to me, recounting the incident and apologizing for not believing me earlier. Meanwhile, the man continued to roam the store making inappropriate comments I couldn't stay inside anymore. I felt suffocated. I decided to go outside into the parking lot, and to my surprise, the man followed me. As I walked away from the store, he grabbed my hair and tried to make physical contact. Fortunately, at that moment, my boyfriend arrived with two police cars. As soon as I saw him, I ran towards him and hugged him. One of the police officers came to me to ensure I was okay, and assured me not to worry, because they would apprehend and take him away. The man, noticing the arrival of the police, started running to escape. After a few minutes, the police managed to apprehend him. They handcuffed him, loaded him into a car, and took him to the police station. I thank the heavens that the man didn't manage to harm me and that my boyfriend arrived in time with the support of the police. Given the behavior of my colleagues in such a delicate situation, I left my job. I didn't want to work in an environment where, if I ever needed support or anything else, it would be denied. It's been four months since that terrible episode, but the psychological scars are still fresh. When I pass by there and remember that experience, a shiver runs down my spine. It was a terrible experience that I wouldn't wish on anyone. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found the content interesting. 
If so, please leave a like and share your thoughts in the comments below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel to stay updated on upcoming content. Greetings, and see you in the next video.